COVID-19 and direct payments, how do the stimulus check phase-outs differ between the House passed American Rescue Plan and Senate Amendment 891? Updated March 5, 2021. This insight briefly summarizes how the proposed third round of payments, often referred to as stimulus checks, would phase out in the House passed version of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, ARPA, H.R. 1319, and the Senate Amendment to H.R. 1319, S.A.M.D.T. 891, proposed by Senator Schumer on March 4, 2021, here and after, Senate Amendment. A more detailed description of the third round of payments in H.R. 1319, as passed by the House on February 27, 2021, can be found here. Overview of Maximum Payment Amount In both the House-passed version of H.R. 1319 and the Senate Amendment, households would generally be issued a single payment based on their income and size. Specifically, a household's maximum payment would equal $1,400 per eligible individual, $2,800 for most married couples, plus an additional $1,400 for each dependent as defined for tax purposes. The definition of dependent would include older children and adult dependents. In most cases, for the purposes of these payments, a household would be all the individuals listed on an income tax return. The payments would be automatically issued to eligible households, generally based on information from 2020 or 2019 income tax returns, that is, income, number of eligible individuals and dependents, and taxpayer identification numbers. If a payment issued in 2021 based on 2019 tax data would have been larger based on 2020 tax data, the IRS would be directed to issue a supplementary top-up payment within 90 days of the 2020 tax filing deadline or September 1, 2021, whichever is earlier. How would the payments phase out in the House passed versus Senate version of the American Rescue Plan Act? In the House passed version of H.R. 1319, the maximum payment amount would phase out over a range of income, $75,000 to $100,000 if single, $112,500 to $150,000 if single with dependents, that is, head of household, $150,000 to $200,000 for most married couples, that is, married filing jointly. The payments would be phased down proportionally, or rateably, in relation to income in the phase out range. For example, if a married couple with two children had $175,000 of income, which is the midpoint of the phase-out range, 50%, the payment would be reduced by 50%, and thus equal $2,800. If the same family instead had income of $187,500 75% of the phase-out range, the payment would be reduced by 75%, and thus equal $1,400. The larger the payment, all else being equal, the faster the payment would phase down by income. In the Senate amendment, the maximum payment amount would phase out over a narrower range of income, $75,000 to $80,000 if single, $112,500 to $120,000 if single with dependents, that is, head of household, $150,000 to $160,000 for most married couples, that is, married filing jointly. The Senate amendment would also use a rateable phase-out, but payments would be phased out more rapidly than under the House passed version of the American Rescue Plan Act. Given the narrower phase-out range, certain households eligible for the payments under the House passed version of H.R. 1319 would receive no payment under the Senate amendment. Other households with income in the phase-out range would receive a smaller payment. This is illustrated below for a single individual with no dependents, a single individual with one dependent, and a married couple with two dependents. Income for the purposes of phasing out these payments is adjusted gross income or AGI. Under the Senate amendment, single individuals with $75,000 of income or less would receive the same amount as under the House bill. For example, in the figure above a single individual with no dependents and income under $75,000 would receive $1,400. Single individuals with income above $75,000 and less than $80,000 would still receive a payment, but it would be less than the payment under the House bill, that is, the orange line is below the black line. Single individuals with income between $80,000 and $100,000 would receive no benefit under the Senate amendment, and a reduced benefit under the House bill. Under the Senate amendment, single individuals with dependents, that is, head of household filers, with $112,500 of income or less would receive the same amount as under the House bill. 
For example, in the figure above a single individual with one dependent and income under $112,500 would receive $2,800, households with income above $112,500 and less than $120,000 would still receive a payment under the Senate amendment, but it would be less than the payment under the House bill, that is, the orange line is below the black line. Single individuals with dependents with income between $120,000 and $150,000 would receive no benefit under the Senate amendment, and a reduced benefit under the House bill. Under the Senate amendment, married couples, that is, joint filers, with $150,000 of income or less would receive the same amount as under the House bill. For example, in the figure above a married couple with two dependents and income under $150,000 would receive $5,600. Married couples with income above $150,000 and less than $160,000 would still receive a payment under the Senate amendment, but it would be less than the payment under the House bill, that is, the orange line is below the black line. Married couples with income between $160,000 and $200,000 would receive no benefit under the Senate amendment, and a reduced benefit under the House bill. Households affected. CRS estimates that under the House passed version of H.R. 1319, approximately 152.9 million households out of a total of 166.1 million households in the United States would be eligible to receive a total of $394 billion in direct payments. CRS estimates that under the Senate amendment, approximately 145.5 million households out of a total of 166.1 million households would be eligible to receive a total of $380 billion in direct payments, an estimated 7.5 million fewer households and a reduction of about $14 billion in the total aggregate dollars of payments compared to the House passed version of H.R. 1319. Details of these estimates, including methodology and a state-by-state -state breakdown can be found here. Author Information Margot L. Crandall-Hollick Acting Section Research Manager